Ooh. Welcome back to Thursday Night Football Preview. We've got the Denver Broncos, 10 and a half point hot dirgers at Kansas City, playing the Chiefs, minus 620 on the money line. You want to be so daring. A little sprinkle. With the over, <laughs> a little sprinkle for the profit to make it look like you hit a couple of unis. Over of 47 and a half. This is a, a shite game. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be a, this is not going to be great. Unless, upset no, alert. It will be. Uh, Jack good. is predicting a Denver win, apparently. He's going to KC, I think. He's going to Arrowhead. Does yeah. every Thursday, right? Yeah. That's so miserable. He probably just says that so it'll be a good game for him to enjoy. Yeah, no chance. Uh, this is actually the first game at least in these Thursday night football previews that we need to notify you of the weather. This will this will be this will become the narrative very quickly. I feel like people will catch on to it. it's going to be a shitty weather game and then everything starts coming down in expectations. Uh, but if you go over to the Roto Grinders website, they have a very uh, useful free resource there where they look at the weather for each game and they mark it either green, yellow, orange or red. Once it gets to the orange red sector, then we start to worry about the weather a little bit. And they have this game marked as yellow slash orange, meaning they're expecting winds sustained between 15 and 20 miles per hour, gusts around 30 miles per hour. There's also a chance for rain, though it's a bit early to be certain of that. So this weather report came Wednesday early by the time Thursday night hits in KC. Maybe it's a little bit different, but definitely something to be on the noggin, in case you're trying to hit those over lines for the receivers, guys like Justin Watson who live and die by the deep ball, you know, over under on passing yards kind of thing. So that is the first storyline that really comes to mind here with this game. Any opening thoughts? I already want to give my game picks, and I guess I'll save that for later. I'm just excited for this one. You're excited for this one? I am. I'm not. I'm always excited for football. I saw this. this could be... What are you excited about? Chiefs then? versus BDG team. I'll be like, this is going to be good. <laughs> I'll, I'll convince myself it's a good game. I saw this beginning of the week being like, God fucking damn it. This is the one game we preview. This is the one game that we deep dive into. A fucking Broncos <laughs> game. Broncos are close to being a blacklisted team where you just you don't, you don't bet on them. You don't start fancy players on them. You just don't talk about them. They don't hit your TV screen. They're not even no. there. So... In this game, at least for the most part, we have full health on both sides. Uh, Javante Williams practiced in full both both Tuesday and Wednesday. So it feels like we're going to have a, a, a full backfield there. Kansas City, we got Travis Kelsey He's dealing with, like, uh, from what I've heard, a super minor low ankle sprain. Probably looked worse than it actually was. He should be good to go as well. So when we look at the game overall, I think, like, I think Jaleel McLaughlin is, like, one of the yeah. most enjoyable storylines of this entire game. Just from a fantasy. I don't he give a shit about good. the game. Yeah, he looks great. He looks like something that they don't have on that team right yeah. now. Explosion. Pop, pop, pop. Heart. Like Heart. The knockoff Devon A. Chan. Yeah. Basically. But, but better. The knockoff. He's healthy. But better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he's the one that's healthy right now. Not on the IR. So I'm excited to see how that backfield shakes up with Javante Williams back now. I kind of feel like Jaleel has his own role. You yeah. know what I mean? Like it's not about Javante being the one or Jaleel being the backup now. It's like Jaleel is a part of their offense, and then it's like figure it out between Javante and Samaje. Mm -hmm. And we always talk about like momentum, who's got the hot hand, and Jaleel's got it at the moment. Very, very hot right now. Um, the Broncos are not very, very hot right now. They just lost to the Bears. So that should tell you basically all you need to they know. They lost to the Jets. They lost to the Jets. They did also lose you're to right. the Bears, you're though, right. I believe, right? No, no, no. no they, they beat the Bears. Beat the Bears. But, they, but the right. Bears looked kind of no good Bears. against them. Yes, yeah. the Bears almost beat them. Then they lost to the Jets. We all know the storyline so, between Sean Payton and Hackett. What's, what do you think is wrong with them? Like, next year, what do they need to do? Like, I feel like it's almost like you're closer to needing to starting over on everything. Like, I, just cut the loss. Well, it was obviously like the Russell Wilson trade just put their franchise in a downward. I kind of feel like their offense is okay. I feel like their defense is just... People, like, legit, I feel like Last went into year, this. it was like... Broncos holding opposite. everyone to 19 points a game. If the offense could just sloppy. score 20 points, it'd be like 13 of four. Their defense it's got like, really bad really quick. And it wasn't like they went from like the number nine defense to the number 16. I feel like they went and became yeah. a bottom like three defense in the NFL. Agreed. Like they're just getting run all over, passed all over. Bottom three and like not even not even third or second to worst. Like so, they, so I, don't, I, I think I just did what you did. They're horrible. Yeah. They're the worst. I'm the bottom three, and they are one. Okay. <laughs> so they're yeah. the worst. They are the worst. What I'm trying to say is they are historic. So wait, hold on. That wasn't a 
that wasn't a setup of a joke you were making. You were trying to get to the fact to, okay. that you were saying you know, they were the no, no, worst. No, 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 no. It, it's like I'm top two, but I'm not two. Yeah, I was trying right. to do the reverse of that. Okay, but I got fucked. I up. I think it's tough with three. Yeah, but you can't. It's got to be bottom bottom two. three, but I'm not three or two yeah. or two. Okay, so that's what you said. But you're getting you're just getting to the point that the Broncos are the worst defense. Yeah, I should just just came out and said that. I think that's kind of their problem. I think their their offense. If they had a normal defense, I think their offense would look okay. I feel like Sean Payton just hates Russ. I feel like Sean Payton hates <laughs> like, being why in Denver. Did, why did he do this? I think I think the other storyline there, too, is like you're hearing so many reports about the trades that can possibly happen there. How I don't know. Like, it's probably hard to buy into being part of that team and like wanting to go out there yeah. and play all the time with all that stuff circulating around. On top of being one and four. Yeah, on top right. of just being bad. Now <laughs> yeah. you're bad and might get traded. <laughs> Do you actually good buy thing. into that? Some, like, you think Judy and Sutton will be there after the trade deadline? No. I think one of them really? will get moved. I, I think they're so. going to start unloading pieces. It yeah. feels really hard to, like, move players, though, midseason in the NFL. I think it someone – it'll be like a Kadarius Tony move, I think, where a team gives okay. up, like, that a That was, third. like, so low state. Like, they, they can't be dishing Judy and Sutton for what Kadarius Tony went, right? What did he go? Maybe, didn't maybe. he go for a second? One for a second. Third. Third and six. Okay. Sorry. Like, that's super reasonable for... That's almost too much for Cortland Sutton. Yeah. For Judy, I could see... <laughs> and Sutton's got a much for Sutton. big contract, I think. They did. Unless it's due up soon. I think it was maybe three for 70 Yeah, in that range. And it might have been I might be way ago. overshooting that, actually. Yeah. Either way, it's, it's got to be close to the end. I think Sutton's a, a tougher sell for Denver. I think Judy could probably... Judy feels like someone they want to have more involved in their offense, though. Like, they'd like to try to build around him, even though... I just I was like, is Judy good? He's had like four years to prove whether or not he's good. Here. And it's just all we do is make excuses for him. So the team right now is just, in, they're down tremendous. Like they're yeah, just, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're in shambles. Like, if we you turn this just, into like TikTok terminology, they're just so down. I don't know if I can name another team that's been down this bad, maybe since the Aaron Rodgers injury, but like take that out. And just the last couple of years, like Denver's down so bad, just from like a public humiliation standpoint where their team is at right now. I mean, you can't even say they're as down bad as the Jets because the Jets at least can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Like, the rest of our team's good. Aaron Rodgers should well, be back next and the year. Jets, we also just beat the Broncos. Well, so. I just mean, like, at the time of it happening. Like, oh. in that one moment, it was like, holy fuck, <laughs> we're down tremendous. <laughs> at least they have, like, a scapegoat of, like, this one thing. The Broncos, like, yeah. we got to fix That's what everything. I mean. Like, they're just in shambles <laughs> right now. Is there any chance that Russ gets benched this year, you think? I don't no. think he's done anything wrong. Me either. Unless it's like a he's just been Derek so Carr remarkable. thing. It's like, we're benching him so he stays healthy, and then we'll trade him. Is he hurt? No, 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 no. no. But last Derek year, Carr. Derek Carr got benched oh. to prevent him from getting hurt. So oh, like, I he barely, had trade value. I barely even remember Do you remember that. the blockbuster Derek Carr benching? No. It wasn't on my radar somehow. Wow. <laughs> and then Stidham came in and fucking cooked. That him. I remember, but yeah. I, I like don't <laughs> I don't remember the context behind it. Fucking Jaron Stidham start. That's an unbelievable pull by you. <laughs> Memory. Big, huge brain. <laughs> no, but I don't. I don't think he gets benched. I mean, I think they're just they're too tied into him. Funny enough, though, Jared Stidham's the backup now. In chill, <laughs> chill. Are you telling me to chill? I didn't even do anything. <laughs> that was a good pull. <laughs> Jared said, oh, there's been so many reports about how Peyton wants to get Stidham in there. It just, is there truth? Stidham the new Taysom Hill. We just start <laughs> seeing him punt and catch passes. Watch that be the move of the deadline. Taysom Hill to Denver. Oh, yeah. my. Twitter would lose their mind. That'd be epic. Yeah, I would love that. Good. I think Dennis Allen loves Taysom Hill. Is there, is there, is that, okay. I don't think that's crazy. Based on where the, I mean, of course, it's in Jerry out of control. Taysom Especially Hill based on the up. fact that he's on like a quarterback contract right now. <laughs> I don't think it's crazy. It's insane. <laughs> I don't think it is. He wants his guys. That's one of his guys. Imagine is, he just starts trading so for like five players. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Graham. <laughs> it's so funny, though, that Sean Payne took the worst part of the Saints <laughs> and just brought him over to Denver. Traquan Smith, uh, Adam Trout. Realistically, is there like, is there a move? Uh, in the NFL that could happen that would make a team more down bad than Taysom <laughs> going to Denver. Like, I don't think I can name one. Like, even if Patrick Mahomes broke something, <laughs> Andy <laughs> Reid would be able to piece together a respectable team. Oh, my God. Sean Payton Broncos. It's honestly just as bad as Nathaniel Hackett Broncos, just other side of the ball. Facts. Oh, my God. He might be... Worse than what they were doing last year. No, it's insane. Dude, fucking Sean Payton was talking all that shit. I hope Nathaniel Hackett, oh, Nathaniel Hackett should come out and say the same fucking thing about yeah, Sean Payton. They're, they're just the fucking Spider-Man meme. <laughs> <laughs> There's no difference between Sean Payton and they Nathaniel might be Hackett. Worse. 
think they are worse. They could be worse. But no one could be worse than the Kansas City wide receiver group right now because I don't know how to separate these fucking guys. They're all running exactly 42% of the routes. They're all putting up less than 42 yards a game. Is there anyone we're hopeful for? Rashi Rice. You like Rashi. It's Rashi. Just, but, like, his his snap counts aren't going up. No. like They're, like, going down. They are. <laughs> like, the They're better like the game he has, like the worse 42. it happens. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck are they doing Andy over Reed's there? slamming the lower of Rashi. <laughs> Of Rashi Rice. I think they still want Kadarius Tony to be good. They want it. It's not. so bad. These Sean Payton should trade for <laughs> Kadarius Tony. Okay. All right. No, seriously. Like All I have to go off. Nothing of to say. Yeah, volume. fuck it. I don't give a shit. Let's just move to the fantasy players because I think that's more of a conversation to be had here. All right. Russ is my boy. Brother. As much as I just. <laughs> as much QB as I just, eight. QB he's your eight. MVP, isn't he? Yeah. No, no, no. He's 10th in fantasy points per game amongst quarterbacks. That was so hard for yeah, you that was to tough. say. I was about to do a fewest least. <laughs> He's averaging the tenth most. He's top ten, he's and he ain't one, two, three, four. He's top ten, and he's the one after seven. He's my QB eight this week because he people gonna think we're high as fuck. Yeah, this episode. Be, his touchdown to intercept ratio is eleven to two. He's top ten in rushing yards. He hasn't done anything wrong. No, statistically, he's been actually really good. Yeah. Do you actually think he's been good though? Like when you're watching him play, he's been so mid. It's so weird. It's because Me and Denver's you caught defense. on to this the other day, where it's like he's creating the same opportunities where he rolls out and he's got a split second to find the guy, and there is no Tyler Lockett anymore that's open down the field. So it's like he looks the same. It's just, and, and I'm not saying he's completely innocent, but it's like his weapons are just way worse. Yeah, that was so sad the way you, there's no Tyler Lockett. No, I just imagine him rolling out <laughs> exactly, and, and just Tyler's like, just there. <laughs> he's just looking at Marvin. <laughs> 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 All right, so we got Russ. We got both of them in the top 10, so you're starting both of them for the most part. Yeah, uh, yeah I'd probably agree with that. Let's move to the running backs. You got Pacheco at RB14, which I don't I don't even think is close to that spicy because, I mean, he's been rolling. I thought it was a little spicy. That's like one spot lower than ECR, which isn't like bad, but yeah, I, not, I thought it was like a I agree with generous. that. He, he's pretty much a must-start at this point. They yeah. have they've started to feed him completely. Well, that and I think, I uh, have it here, Denver, Denver give gives up, up the most. The most fantasy, fantasy points, points to yeah. running backs, yeah. I mean, as 10.5-point favorites, you'd imagine they're going to be in the red zone a ton of times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like right. it's the card order. Hold on. I'm going to get in here. <laughs> Ask his thoughts on the Broncos. <laughs> Who's your MVP? <laughs> what the fuck? You ordered that? Are we going to carve? <laughs> Are we going to carve? We're going to have a carving contest. Good. We're going to have a jack-o'-lantern contest. Wait, I'm so confused. Was that not Instacart? It was Instacart. What's the, what are you confused about? Oh, did you... When you ordered, you had to hit like a certain limit for shipping or something to be free. Is that why you kept asking for stuff? No, you, you do. It's thirty five bucks, item. but that was easy. Oh. No, you have to. I pay, thought I you like got the pumpkin 35. to hit the threshold. No, 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 we're way. This was this was just a this was just a good purchase. That's all this was. This was a value add. Continue, right. continue with the episode. Jaleel, it feels a little high, but I'm going based on what my eyes told me, and he looked good. Are you worried though that that? Like, there's just not enough touches to go around those three running backs? It, I, it's hard to get a grip on this backfield. I'm not going to lie. Like, I struggled to have, like, a, a real thorough thought process. But I, I believe in the order I put, it's just I don't know if they're all that – are they all top 40 yeah. running backs? No, I, th- I think this is right. I feel like uh, – The order or the actual ranking or both? I, I think I would probably agree with both. I think I might throw more separation between Javante and Pirine. I kind of think this maybe turns into like a Jaleel Javante thing. Behind uh, Samaje, I got Chuba, McKinnon, Kendra. McKinnon was. I think uh, Miles might be out. He's like think? apparently banged up. He's kind of he's considerably been banged up though. I feel like. Yeah, but he's missing practice now, so I think Chuba right. could be a little bit higher. Who else did you have? Behind? Also, I like McKinnon more than P Ryan. I mean, we're talking about like having a if we had P to Ryan. I think P Ryan's zone. like too close to flirting with like a startable spot here for that ranking. Got Kendra, Akers, Gibson. Yeah, it's gross. Yeah. That's why I feel like Javante could probably be a little bit higher. I think his touchdown upside is like kind of there. But I think Jaleel separating himself there is real. I think Sean Payton fucking loves Jaleel, and I think they're going to keep letting him rip. Exactly. He's just like a big play waiting to happen every time he touches the ball. So he's he's definitely like on that RB2 borderline for me. I, I, I kind of hope. I don't know. We, I just got to hope for a close game because if it gets out of hand, we're not going to be able to see him. I just want to see more of him. That's what I'm hoping for. You don't but. think they'll keep him in? It's it's not that I don't think they'll keep him in. It's just how much can they actually use him? I feel as if he's a good pass catcher. Yeah, I mean, he looks solid, but I don't know. I just don't think dump offs is going to be their game plan. Maybe. I feel like Russ is I, – I could see Jill having a, a big uh, involvement in the passing game and kind of I hope there. you're right. Like, I, I feel like I he's just, like a good version of Jarek McKinnon pretty much. We're also talking about 
you know, the bad weather. That usually keeps games around the line of scrimmage. A lot of handoffs, a lot That's of dump-offs. We're talking about a Broncos upset. Is, this, is the spread too big based yeah. on the weather then? Yeah, yes. it is. Unfortunately. Upset alert. Nah, Thoughts? I wouldn't go that far. Fuck. <laughs> Minus 650 it. sprinkle. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the Chiefs don't actually lose. They just don't win by that much. Like last, was it last week they played the Jets? Their last game? Vikings. Yeah. Oh, they, right. They beat the Vikings. The Vikings. They, they beat the, the Vikings by one score. And the Vikings were also like marching down the field at the end of the game. So the Chiefs were like, damn. The Chiefs are definitely they, not like the, uh, the like the powerhouse. That yeah. They, chill, I still think chill. it's early. They're, they're, the, they're like the second best team. So Behind the 49ers, I agree. Yeah. But, mm. like, really? them, them losing is still them winning by only three or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, people probably look at that Jets game being like, dude, <laughs> Jets won. Their Jets offense is a mess, I feel like. I don't know. But it's their a, defense, though, is, like, the best it's been with Mahomes. So, it's yeah. like, it doesn't matter. I kind of feel like they go through stretches where it's that every year. Where it's like, oh, the Chiefs have a top five defense, and then they have, like, three fucking terrible games in a row. And then we're like, okay, they're okay. And then they're, like, a lead again. I think, I think their defense is good. I think it's definitely good. I think they have a lot of good players, but I don't know. Something just kind of feels off when you no, watch they, the Chiefs They offense. definitely test the limits of how far can just a head coach and a quarterback combo go. Yeah, but they've been doing that for a while, to be and fair. And it goes pretty fucking It well. feels yeah. messier than ever this year, yeah, and maybe that's because we're yeah. in it. But it might be it, a little messier because Kelsey's, like, good. He's still the, probably the best tight end. He's looked the worst he's looked. Exactly. Just based on, like, overall outlook of being injured and all this kind of shit. And when he's not there, like, week one against Detroit. Now we know Detroit's a really good team. Their offense looked terrible mm -hmm. in week one without Kelsey. And I feel like kind of looks like that. Not, I mean, not all the time and not more often than not. And they, and they look better with Pacheco back at full strength now. But, like, when they have to turn to Clyde, when they have to turn to, like, Noah Gray as their guys. Well, it also plays in what you're saying with Rice's, like, snaps. Being inconsistent. Like, they don't have a consistent program or system that they rely on. It's There's like just no separation. Too much fluctuation. None Nobody of their is. receivers get separation. Eric Bieniemy. Mm. Mm. They're feeling mm. the absence. <laughs> They're feeling the absence of Eric. <laughs> All right, let's let, let's talk about the wide receivers. So you love the Denver receivers. Is that loving them? You love them. Jerry Judy's yet to finish inside the top 30 this year. 35. So, so, so think I think it's respectable giving him somewhere even in the 30s. Yeah, Jerry Judy 35, Sutton 38. Got no problem. I think they're borderline flex guys. Um, I wouldn't have too much faith in either of them. Rashi Rice down there at 43. Marvin Mims. Mimsy. The big 6-1. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing you could do with him. No. You just you just wait and pray. You could take, like, throw him in there and just hope your 15% chance of a deep touchdown pans out. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't really have much to say. I think these are pretty standard around them. Do you got disagreements, either of you? Yeah, I'm pissed. Do you think it's too respectful? I don't know. I, ca I can't really picture who's around them, but um, I'm not excited to start any receiver in this matchup. What players? I feel like the only player I'm excited for is Jaleel McLaughlin. I like the Kansas game. City running backs. I think I still want to see every week the mystery of the Chiefs wide receivers. Yes. With the, I, I mean, what, what could happen that you feel good about? The only thing I feel like is like Rashi plays 75% of the snaps and has like goes eight for 70 in a touchdown. Like that'd be cool. But yeah. other than that, like I don't give a fuck if any of them have a big game because I don't believe that there'll be pieces going forward. I, I think even like Rashi. Sky Moore. Yeah, no. At this point. Him or KT, they can have a big game and it doesn't mean anything. Tony doesn't mean nothing to you? Oh, <laughs> it means sentimental, but as far as an uh, actual fantasy I figure you'd goes, be a fucking, you'd be sucked he's right my back MVP. in. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move into the underdoge slips. And every game, every day, they have a free square for people that have not signed up yet. So this is incentive to get onto the platform. If you use our code BDGE when signing up and depositing, they are going to double whatever you put down, and they're going to give you this free square for Mr. Patrick Star Mahomes. 0.5 yards. He's got to hit more than that. Shouldn't be too tough of a task. My square is the Isaiah Pacheco lower than 90 and a half rushing plus receiving yards. Now, this is not one I feel ultra confident in. Like, it would not surprise me if he goes over this. He's played really, really, really well. But when you get down into, like, the granular numbers, he's gone over 60% of the snaps one time this year. Obviously, he's on his way getting back from being hurt in the beginning of the year. But even last game wasn't over 60%. Uh, the touches are going in the right direction but unless he rips off a big play, which could definitely happen against Denver, really, I just think the number is a little bit too high to start off with as a baseline. So kind of just playing the percentages here. I think Pacheco's really talented. I think he'll have a good game and get a lot of goal line opportunities. But in order for him to hit this number, I kind of feel like they need to just wave CEH off the field. Jarek McKinnon not get a lot of run. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like the running backs need to, high. Yeah, they need to not be involved and that 
I mean, Kansas, Kansas City is not really a team that like doesn't involve all their players. So I'm, ta- I'm taking the lower on Pacheco here. I feel like when you look at this matchup, before seeing anything else, you're like, Chiefs versus Broncos, you're like, oh, I'm going to go slam McKinnon overs, whatever they are. And then you go look and you're like 90. Like that is, it's high. But yeah. I don't know. It, it makes me feel a little uneasy trying like to fade what, in this matchup. What running backs get that 90 spot on their squares? That, that's what I'm saying. You know what they're I mean? they're yeah. listing them as if he's. It's like he's Saquon or some shit. Yeah. yeah. Which I'm just like, just off the rip, I'm like, I'm, I'm going lower on that. Yeah. Uh, a Kansas City Chief running back that we do like this week, though, is Jarek McKinnon to go higher than 12 and a half receiving yards in his last three games against the Broncos. He has had games of five catches for 52 yards, seven catches for 112, Jeez. three catches for 26 yards. And that it's is a pattern. It, it's a pattern. Actually, it's, it, it just is it's over a trend. It's, yeah, a, it's a trend. Pattern would, a pattern would assume that there's a back and forth. There is no back and forth. It's just fourth. It's just more than 12 and a half. <laughs> And this is even counting for the fact that Isaiah Pacheco also gets his in the passing game against the Broncos. Uh, In his rookie year, Pacheco had five grabs for 41 yards on top of what McKinnon was already doing. So there's a whole bunch of receptions to go around for these running backs, a whole bunch of yards. Broncos, as we've mentioned, they're terrible against the running backs. I mean, Brian Robinson through the air, two for 42. Gibson, three for 44. Brees Hall, three for 17. Michael Carter, three for 14. Herbert, four for 19. Dude, everybody this year has gone over this receiving line as a running back against the Broncos. Jarek McKinnon, he's playing like 30% of the snaps. He's running 30% of the routes. Like, he's just the receiving back there. There's no reason why. No, this is a Clyde game now. No, not even. <laughs> We're it, both getting cooked. Even if Clyde was significantly more involved, in the last couple of weeks, McKinnon has beat this receiving line off one grab. The dude doesn't need hardly any volume at all to surpass this line. So McKinnon over 12 and a half. Also, we already have an uh, Isaiah Pacheco square on here, but his receiving line is also at like 11 and a half. You could probably take both of them. Fuck it. Let me need a Denver square. Yeah, I was just about to say. No, we don't. We don't need a Denver square. So pick a Denver square, <laughs> pumpkin boy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Marvin Mims <laughs> over 16 and a half receiving yards. You know what's crazy? Marvin Marvin Mims leads the Broncos in receiving yards. Not bad. <laughs> it's not, actually like not, not super surprising. Not that's good. good. That's very surprising. <laughs> not good either. Good for Marv. How many catches do you have? Three? <laughs> we only need one. Because <laughs> he has the second highest A dot in the league. 20 yards on average per target. One catch. We cash. Don't be mad. It might feel like a coin toss play, but you put me in a tough spot. And I'm willing to take heads. And you're crawling or tails. out of it. I respect it. Yeah, that was good. That was a good pivot on our, on our sheet. You don't actually have a Bronco. Do you want to talk about Rashi Rice? Might as well oh, throw a fourth yeah. guy in there. If you, yeah, we'll just make it five legs with yeah. the Mahomes. With the Mahomes. Rashi Rice square. leads the Chiefs in targets, has gone over 30 yards in three straight games, averaging 35 on the season. Um, Kelsey. The squares. Rashi Rice over 30 and a half. Rashi Rice over 30 and a half receiving yards, three straight games, averaging 35 on the season, leads the Chiefs, wide receivers and targets, and Kelsey, low ankle sprain. Not a big deal, but on a short week, it's enough of a deal to give Rice a slightly bigger role, possibly. I'll take it. All we do is take hires, besides Nick Pacheco. Besides, yeah. Nick's, Nick's the one logical guy who will take a lower every now and then. I'm the winner. I'm a winner. I'm the bread maker. All right. I'm the baker. It's time to predict <laughs> the game. It's time to play the game. <laughs> J-Mo. Broncos. You're taking Denver money line? That's wild. <laughs> they, they easily cover. Dude, you remember last year when Hackett got fired and Russ had like three good games? Mm-hmm. They, I think two of them were against the Chiefs. Just really? saying, just saying. I think Throw that's what there. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> good chance none of that's true. Um, it feels like every time these big spread games happen, I take the wrong side. I don't know what to do. You guys both took Denver. I'm taking Denver plus the points. Uh, it's it's more of just the conditions, the hook of too. the weather. Like we get a half on there. That's nice. Isn't that what it is? Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean. Can I just take the Chiefs money line? <laughs> sprinkle. Just a little sprinkle. <laughs> a little sprinkle dinkle. Put a little 10 bucks on Chiefs money line. Your 30 cents in yeah. return. Look, Patrick Mahomes against these big spreads of over a touchdown or more, only hitting at a 41% clip. I feel like the Chiefs, whenever they get up big, they start playing super slow after halftime. They, they just don't blow teams out because they, they don't need to. That's they fair. toy with their food a little bit. It's also a divisional game. I think Sean Payton getting embarrassed <laughs> by the Jets and Nathaniel Hackett last week. Like, how do you I thought how do you that? not come out? I think he might just get double embarrassed. I, double I, thought embarrassed. I think Andy <laughs> Reid did that to the Dolphins. Like, he lost by 70 to the Dolphins. Andy Reid might smother <laughs> well, then, wait, this what man. Was, what was the week after the Dolphins? 
Was it the Jets? Oh, I think it might have been the Bears. No, that was the Bears when so they he, won. So he bounced back. Again, uh, so the defense didn't bounce back. They every other. All but right. they, they beat the Bears. <laughs> Sean can't be Payne. embarrassed twice in a row. <laughs> Got it. Exactly. Sean Payton gets embarrassed, has to come back, and he's like, all right, I'm good. And then he gets re-embarrassed. So next week we'll be fading the Broncos. This week. Who do they play next week? I want Now I'm curious. I want to know if there's a storyline behind it. <laughs> Who do you talk Check shit to this time? Yeah. Dude, Sean Payton feels like a little bit of It'd a It'd be kind of epic if it was the Saints. Oh, right. I don't think they play this year. After the Chiefs, the Broncos play the Bills. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's... that's just like an auto embarrassment. Okay. All right, so trend trend is looking good. All right, fuck it. Yeah. Broncos money line. And then you're you're taking the under. Just because of weather. That, and, and if I'm expecting the Broncos cover, I think it's got to be someone low scoring. See, that's what, that's what my thought process was too. But then I try to pick an actual score of the game. And I just think the Chiefs are going to score too much. I think they're good for like 28. That's true. This could be like, like a 37-30 like or some bullshit. It, it feels like the Chiefs are going to try to take it slow. There's no fucking chance it's a 37-30 game. Dude. No, 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 no not like that. No fucking chance. Maybe a little high, but like I think that one of them could get to the 30s. Mm, I don't I don't know, dude. No, I think, I think I, Maybe it's I'm thinking like, about changing to the over. It's just tough because I, I feel like the Chiefs are good for like 28. 37, 30, so loading. <laughs> That's so big. 67 the most dramatic point. shit you've ever said in your life. <laughs> I'm taking the under, but this could be a 50 a, to Did the Broncos game. win that game? <laughs> like, <laughs> no. Oh, my God. Um, I don't know who I, Look, I, I Okay, so going back to the total, I think – I think the Chiefs are good for, like, 28, but I do think the Broncos can keep up with, like, a 21 of their own. So I don't love taking the over. I just don't know how this Broncos defense stops anybody. Like, they're they're relying on their offense solely to keep them in games, which I do think they can here, but I I don't see them winning. Just 10.5 for a divisional game is so much. Yeah, all right, fuck it. I'll take the Denver money line. (laughs) <laughs> we're back baby <laughs> i'm taking denver plus ten and a half i'm gonna take the under i'm just following jmo you took the bears last week right i did i t- yeah, I, nice. I said bears money line i had week. bears money line yeah no, this shit was crazy <laughs> y'all were so mad at me for he saying bears s- money s- he was so mad at us <laughs> he was pissed he was so mad we did that he was like you guys are taking the he was like this bears <laughs> commanders game could be 50 to 60 <laughs> yeah. it was a big game 40, it was 20? actually a huge game for one team Sam <laughs> Howers get sacked a hundred times every game I cannot wait for this 37-30. <laughs> it's going to be the worst game in, in Thursday Night Football history. Yeah. Broncos are going to cover a 13-3 game. Probably. Or this will be some dumb shit where one of them, like, went for two, and it, like, affects the spread somehow. And, yeah. Uh, some corrupt shit's about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be sunny. <laughs> it's going to be 70 and sunny. Game. All right. Jamo, take us out. All right, that's our Thursday night preview. (laughs) That's too much. Too many words. Peace. That was like the whole fucking episode, your (laughs) outro there.